It's important to address the need for ecosystem restoration in almost every ecosystem type in the world today in an increasingly full world, increasingly human dominated world. It's no longer possible to say, well, that bit over there is not working for us anymore. We'll pick up and move our tents elsewhere. Nowadays, we have to say, hmm, we made a mess, or our forefathers made a mess. Can we repair? Can we recuperate? Can we restore what has been lost or degraded? One way of thinking about it is simply repairing damaged lands or ecosystems. There's a lot of land, a lot of water as well, that most people would consider damaged or degraded nowadays. I would argue there are three main responses to severe degradation or impairment. One is full-blown restoration. We try to recover what we've lost or to repair or reassemble what we have undone. That we could call restoration, ecological restoration. A second response is ecological rehabilitation, which is less ambitious and more task-oriented. If ecological restoration seeks to recover the structure, the functioning, and the actual composition of a damaged ecosystem, rehabilitation will focus on the functioning. We're not going to be as concerned with the species inventory that perhaps we can identify from a previous historic epi epic or era. Rather, we'll think about the functions of the ecosystem that have been lost. For example, a grazing ecosystem that had a carrying capacity of X. And now the carrying capacity is X divided by three. Something has really gone wrong. We'd like to rehabilitate that system in ecological and economic terms to get back the productivity of that grazing land. The third possible response I would call reallocation. We say, no, this grazing land isn't going to work ever again or in a human lifetime as a grazing land. Let's find a new use for it. An additional important point is that we can do all three of these things simultaneously in a given landscape. It's very important to observe, analyze, diagnose problems of these sorts at the landscape level. Now, if you'd like some examples, I can give an example from Brazil, and one from Peru, and one from South Africa. From Brazil, there's a very exciting large-term, long-term large-scale, long-term restoration program underway called the Atlantic Forest Restoration Pact. It's a coalition of people and organizations trying to restore 15 million hectares of the Atlantic Forest biome that occurred on the eastern coast of uh, Brazil when Europeans first arrived there some 500 years ago. Less than 10% of that forest or biome is still intact and this group or coalition is trying to restore a huge piece of it by 2050. In those tropical regions that extend from southeastern Brazil to northeastern Brazil along the coast, Trees go very quickly, and 30 years of experience have allowed the scientists and practitioners in this group to develop ways of truly restoring that mega-diverse forest. 
It also happens to be the part of Brazil where 60% of the human population lives and depend on forests for many ecosystem services. So that restoration project will have tremendous value both for wildlife and biodiversity in all senses of the, of the word and for humans. And it's truly a restoration project. That is, they're aiming to restore structure, function, and composition. A rehabilitation example would be a post-mining project high in the Andes of southern Peru where uh, environmental engineers and agronomists are working with a mining company to recuperate the grazing capacity of former grazing lands that have been drilled and mined for various minerals. And they may use native grass species and they may use introduced grass species that tolerate high altitude and cold conditions in order to get back the productivity of those lands after the mining site has been closed. I wouldn't call that restoration, but rather rehabilitation. And it can have major impact on the lives of local people. And such an activity could be funded by the mining company as part of their payback for access to the subsurface wealth in the ground. A third example from South Africa would be a reallocation of a mine site where a mining company comes to an agreement with the government, say, all right, we're going to dig a big hole and we're going to extract minerals, we'll export some of the wealth, but we'll pay a lot of taxes, and some of the wealth will remain in the country and even locally. But what about the environment? After we've dug this big hole, maybe instead of trying to restore or rehabilitate the ecosystem that was there prior to the mining operation, we can find another use for this hole. And indeed, there are many examples of new uses for former mine sites. Now, to go back to my landscape perspective, we can imagine, and should almost anywhere in the world, Think about a degraded site within the larger landscape perspective and at the same time within the socioeconomic context of that site. And we may discover that within the landscape we'll try to conserve certain areas that have important watershed functions, for example, or if the watershed is disturbed or degraded, we might need to restore, if we take a simple forest landscape model, the forest has been damaged, all right, upstream let's restore the forest. But along the river we may have good farming land and we'll aim there to rehabilitate land so that we can farm and have water services along the course of the river. And elsewhere, we may reallocate. We say, well, we need firewood. Local people need firewood. Let's have some fast-growing, timber-producing species, whether native or not, growing over here on formerly degraded lands. And then these three or four different activities can be coordinated at the landscape scale. That's an example of combining conservation, sustainable development to meet local needs and restoration and rehabilitation within a given landscape.